As a commercial photographer, I work with a number of clients that require me to shoot on location. And for that reason, I really like working with battery powered or portable mono lights and strobes. If you've seen or are familiar with the newer Vision 4 flash, uh, first of all, know that these are also made by Visico. So know that if you're working with newer flashes, you also have full compatibility with the Visico lines. And working with the Vision 4s and the Vision 5s for a few years now, I've actually ended up with a Vision 5 that got smashed on a job and I need to replace it because it's become unreliable. It still works, but it's become unreliable and that has led me to replace it with the ML300, or at least that was the attempt. And we're going to get to that. So where does this flash and the Vision 4, how do these compare? Uh, we're going to talk about that. We're going to talk about the similarities and the differences. And I think that on the surface, you might, like I did, think that these are basically the same flashes. But they are not. <laughs> First, I want to start with a quick overview of what the Vision 4, Vision 5 flash ecosystem is like. Uh, for starters, the Vision 4s are their base 300 watt mono lights. They come with a lithium ion battery that goes in the back, and they have your bulb and a LED modeling light in the front and they have this handy grip that you can use either on location for uh, an assistant to hold or you can put it on a stand and they have an umbrella mount here in the middle. And that's it in a basic nutshell. They use the Bowens bayonet system. There are plenty of attachments out there in the Bowens format. If you step up from the 300 watt to the 400 watt you get into the knee where Vision 5, and this is a much more capable strobe with high-speed sync, TTL, and a little more power. When working with the Vision 4s and the Vision 5s, there's two triggers that they produce or they uh, provided. The one that comes with the Vision 4 is a basic trigger, which has a manual button, and it works with manual triggering on your camera flash. However, what a lot of people don't know is that with the Vision 5, when you get the VC818TX transmitter, you, have, you gain the power of not only controlling your Vision 5, but you also gain the power of controlling groups with Vision 4s. Being able to adjust the Vision 4s from your camera becomes very, very useful, especially if the flashes are up high, which is why I initially bought the Vision 5. However, it was only recently that I discovered that I can also control my Vision 4s by putting them into groups. I have three groups through the transmitter, A, B, and C. I generally run my uh, Vision 5 on group A, and B and C will be my kickers or my fill lights or whatever I'm doing with my Vision 4s. That will become very important when we compare this to the ML300. What's the same between these two flashes is they effectively look and operate pretty well identically. They're both 300 watt flashes, they both have lithium ion batteries, and they, everything appears to be roughly the same with the exception of some cosmetic differences. They both use Bowen's mount, for example. The next thing that's similar is that the modeling lamp on both of these lights is activated for only 60 seconds. It does not stay on, which is genuinely one of the detriments to this light. If you wanted to use it as a hot light or for, a, for video work, it's just not going to do that longer than 60 seconds, so get your shot quickly or buy another light. Uh, the packaging looks almost the same. What you get in the box is virtually the same. You get the same transmitter between the ML300 and the Vision 4, and they both have the same handles that adjust in basically the same manner. But Niwer has made a few improvements and a few drawbacks. For starters, they improved the knob on the side of the grip. The knobs have longer handles which allow you to exercise more leverage when you tighten and loosen them. Now these, as you can probably hear, are some of the worst sounding <laughs> joints I've ever heard of on a flash. Uh, and when tightening them you do have to deliberately tighten them pretty darn tight because even then they rock a little bit because they're geared. Uh, that can be both good and bad. The good is that it can hold re decently heavy modifiers. The bad is you don't have a lot of leverage on the Vision 4 to tighten that, and they fixed that on the ML300. So good on you, Niwer. You fixed that knob. Works better. Still sounds 
like garbage, but they work really well. Secondly, you have this flashy branding on the side. Oh, yeah. Oh, Neewer, you've outdone yourself. You put a blue tag on. Admittedly, it looks a little better. These are not the prettiest lights. They are rubberized metal, and they are gray, like pretty much the worst tone of gray I can think of, but they still work really well. And for the price you're paying, you know, cosmetics aren't the end of the world. But Neewer's added this branding on the side. They've also added this attractive band here. Now, in terms of function, it is exactly the same mechanism as on the V4, but it looks a little better. On the backs, you'll see that the, the panels are, or the control panels are a little different. And this is where much of the functionality remains the same, but for some inexplicable reason, they have moved the buttons around. One of the issues I have with the Vision 4 is that the display on the back of the light is completely illegible unless you're looking straight on. This means that if the light is slightly off axis for you, or if it's up high, you're going to have to bring that light down in order to look at the screen and make any adjustments. This is where having the 818 trigger makes a big difference, is being able to adjust those without necessarily having to see the screen. With the ML300, they have corrected this problem. This display can be viewed at several different angles, and in some respects is vastly superior to the Vision 4. So you can adjust the lights on the back, but you can no longer adjust them using the channel groupings that are on the 818 trigger. And that's because, according to Neewer, the Vision 5 is now discontinued. Now this trigger is being replaced by a new triggering system they've brought in that works with their Q series, but those triggers do not necessarily work with the Vision 4s or the ML300s. I cannot confirm whether they do or do not, but I know that the trigger on the, that comes with the ML300 is not a Q-type trigger. So in essence, the ML300 becomes an isolated strobe in the system. You cannot control in groupings with the other flashes that Neewer is now selling. The good news is that it can be manually triggered with the same triggers as the Vision 4 and the Vision 5. The bad news is you cannot group them. So even if you can make it go, you're still relegated to manual adjustments on the back of the flash. Another adjustment that really surprised me is that although the batteries appear to be the same, they are not. This is a subtle change, and I'm not sure why. Now, interestingly enough, they are the same size, and they indeed fit. But when we read the labels, what we see is that uh, the Vision 4 flashes come with a 7800 milliamp hour battery, or a 6000 milliamp hour battery. Just depends on which one you ordered, I guess. But the difference that I noticed here that's actually significant is that they have different power outputs. This one has 66.6 .6 watt seconds and is nominal voltage 11.1 .1 volts. This one, which I also purchased with my Vision 4, is 86.6 .6 watt hours and 11.1 .1 volt, 7800 milliamp hours. So I have two there that are different sizes. I don't know which one's which or which one it came with because I've bought a few of these Vision 4s. But the uh, the ML300 comes now with, interestingly enough, they all have the same model number. Apparently it's Q4, and this is model Q4, but the one that came with the ML300 says it is 10.8 volts, 84.24 watt hours. Although there are a few improvements in the ML300, they are not large enough to warrant, in my opinion, buying the ML300 over the Vision 4. But the big question is, is the Vision 4 actually discontinued? Well, as long as they're on the market and you have faith in the system, I would consider purchasing them because I have an 818 trigger. If you can still get it, I would recommend that. And that allows you to get a lot of functionality out of these flashes, which have no shortage of power, incredible stamina, regardless of what battery I put on it. It has incredible stamina. They last and last and last. And even if the LCD screens shut down or, they, or the digital displays shut down in the cold, which is an issue for me here in Canada, I would still argue that these are excellent budget flashes. For under $1,000, you can get four lights and set them up and control them remotely and control their powers. And they, their output is excellent. I find the color is consistent. And if you know how to use ND filters, you can overpower the sun very easily. That said, 
for the longevity of the system, if you have more money, I would strongly recommend looking at the Godox system or something that's going to be more controllable down the road and more consistent. That said, that's the ML300 and the Vision 4 compared. Have you used them both or have you used either of these? Let me know in the comments. <laughs>